Hey guys, how's it going? Captain 23 here. We're getting some nice Indian summer type weather. So I'm out here working on the Westie. I had a whole Bay Window Westie episode filmed of welding in a patch panel and then unfortunately my camera decided that it wasn't going to save any of the files. So I figure we're just going to do a little off the cuff thing. I'm not actually too crazy about the way I was doing that Bay Window Westie series anyway. I feel that instead of making like episodes, we should just do, um, you know, pop the camera on whenever I'm working on something and just talk about it. So in that episode, I welded this patch panel on, and yes, I'm well aware it looks like garbage. Um, you don't have to go into the comments and tell me. Um, a welder by trade, I ain't. Um, so... However, I think I'm going to remove this, and I'll explain why later. Um, coming around to the front, I uh, fixed the dog leg, so that's nice, and I put a patch right here. I didn't notice this when I bought the car. Uh, I thought this was all fine, but this was all like loose and flaky, and I was just able to poke it out with my finger. So I put a patch in there, and it, yeah, it's not pretty, but it doesn't have to be. This is essentially a cap, so I'm going to put seam sealer and everything around there. I did notice... I kind of started picking at this, and uh, it doesn't seem to be much worse than this, so I'm going to try to weld this up, and uh, should be able to do that. The reason that I'm going to remove this patch panel I welded on, not just because it looks like trash, um, but because I actually discovered, and I don't know if I can get this on the camera, let me see if I can wiggle the camera in here and if it'll actually adjust to the darkness. There's a hole right here, and I didn't even notice that. I noticed it when I was wire brushing in here to, uh, come on, focus, God damn you. Um, when I was wire brushing this to POR15, the inside of the fender, I actually blew this out, and I didn't even notice it. And uh, that's not good. So I don't know how I'm gonna be able to weld this from this side. I might try to pull the wheel off and see if I can throw something on it from this side, but I think I'm going to have to take this panel off as much as I don't want to um, because I'm going to have to weld it from the inside. Um, but that's about all the rust on this side. I'll take you around the other side and the back and talk about some other stuff. Uh, coming around the back here, I did straighten the deck lid a little bit. Yeah. I'm having many tribulations finding another one, so we might have to try to work with the one we've got for right now. Um, as much as it's, yeah, it's bad, man. It's really bad. Um, I'm probably going to try to cut all of this material out and weld like a piece of um, angle iron into the bottom to try to reinforce it and uh, see how we go from there. However, I deemed that this... Um, this is called the uh, apron of the rear. I determined this was completely ruined and I bought another one um, because I just decided that, I mean, like, look at this. It's like all rusted away. It's delaminated itself. You can see there's a huge gap in here. There's actually a mouse nest inside there from when it was sitting. And uh, yeah, so that's gotta go and uh, yeah, this is just ruined. So I'm just going to cut that out and weld the new one I bought in. It's a lot easier than trying to fix this old broken thing, and I think it'll look a lot better in the end. And then finally, coming around to this side, um, not a lot of rust issues over here, just a very small amount right here, and I have a patch panel for this side. Um, this side's significantly better than the other side. In terms of rust, there's no damage on the inside here. Um, I'm pushing as hard as I can on that, and... Yeah, nothing. It's not making any noise or anything like that. So we're going to, um, you see there is a bit of, yeah, nice. Um, there's a bit of, you know, rust here. But luckily, like with the other side, it basically just stopped right here. So I'm able to keep a lot of um, OG fender. I don't have to um, cut huge amounts of steel out of the, the vehicle. And then there's another small hole in the dog leg if we walk around to the other side the other front um, and those are not difficult to fix basically grind it out and weld a little patch in right here maybe a little bit worse on this side but not really 
um, and then nothing else that's good on this side that little piece right here is not rusted and there's no rust inside the wheel well or on the inner part of this fender which is good um, so yeah that's basically what we're doing and I'll keep making little updates as I go along and uh, I'm gonna try to yank that wheel off and uh, take a look at the see if I can weld the inside if I can actually fit like my big head and my welding gun in there maybe I can get away with doing that if not oh well we'll uh, we'll figure something else so, out So, oh look there's a little spider right there <laughs> so I thought I'd take you on a little tour of the underside of this bus because the previous owner really kept up a maintenance regime second to nobody as far as I'm concerned because this thing is just unbelievable. I have volumes of maintenance documentation that he gave me when I purchased it. And uh, from what I can gather, the last major service it has, which is about two and a half, three thousand 3,000 miles prior to what the odometer reads right now, um, he did a pretty major service. He did new brakes and rotors in the front, new drums and pads in the rear, and uh, as well as some other things, he did a new set of, of, of shock absorbers here. These are uh, F-I-C-H-T-E-L. Fictal, maybe? I'm not sure. They see they have the VW logo on them, so I'm assuming they're just VW OEM shocks. He did a new set of axle boots on either side. He did a new set of these little... They look like a Kong dog toy. They're the... Uh, bumpers for the suspension. Um, he also did brake lines, uh, fuel lines, although I'm going to replace all the fuel lines, obviously, because it's a fuel-injected Volkswagen, and if you don't replace them, like, very regularly, the thing catches on fire. Um, I think he did some, like, valve cover gaskets, and he did new heater boxes, which I know is a problem on these. They rust away, and you can see these are brand new. He replaced the heater boxes. Um, I'm just cleaning all this up and I'm going to undercoat back here as well after cleaning all the, the dirt and such off. Um, but as you can see, I'll hold the camera up in here and the flashlight, which I'm just using my phone. It is very clean. One of the cleanest I've ever seen, as a matter of fact. That's why I bought it. So, I'll pop you back on if anything interesting. Oh, it's early in the morning the next day and we're working on the bus again. Today, I think we're going to look at the rear end and some other stuff. Um, the right-hand side is basically done. It just needs some filler and some paint, and it will uh, look as good as it performs. I don't know what I was going to say there. Um, it's just very solid and, and very stout. I did seam sealer on all the gaps, and uh, everything is really solid. So we're just going to make it look pretty at some point. Not today, though. I'm going to do one day after I've done the whole bus, um, I'm going to do one filler work day where I put the filler on and I sand it and everything. Um, but for today, we're going to work on the back, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this bar out, this, this big bent-up piece of steel. Um, I purchased one on the internet, just off the Samba. Here it is. You can see it's it's not the right color, but that's not a problem. Um, we can always fix that. Um, you can see. Uh, but one thing that I noticed is it's got part of one on this side, and it doesn't have any of them on the other side. It doesn't have these little rollovers, and I like them. I like the way they look. I've seen a lot of people who replace the rear ends on these buses, and they just delete them. But I figure we'll try to keep this as original as possible and uh, we'll keep these. So I'm gonna try to cut this one off before this, and yes, I realize this is pretty sad, but we're gonna try to save as much of it as we can um, with patches and things like that, because I don't have those pieces on this one that I bought. It's basically cut off flush with the inside here, and I noticed that this is separated, so I'm gonna actually have to cut this and then fold that all back and weld it up. So I think we'll get to it. I'm just going to use a sawzall to cut this off. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I can get a grinder in there. That's why. Well, 
after many a trial and nary a tribulation, we've uh, got the rear bar off and uh, can really see the extent of the damage here from the collision. Uh, the engine looks intact. Um, I'd expect it to be. I mean, it seems to run fine. But this tin work here for the air intake is quite smashed. Uh, this tin work here is smashed. Luckily, it looks like our frame is good. There's no big wrinkles or anything here, um, which tells me that the structural integrity of the vehicle is still present. Um, if there had been big wrinkles and stuff there, I would have definitely taken a step back. Um, but there's not. One thing I found was that there were mice living in the bumper. That's nice. So I had to put a mask on and a HEPA filter bag in the shop vac and make sure I cleaned all that out of there. Don't want to be getting the uh, rotavirus or whatever it's called, hauntavirus. Um, but it looks okay. This is a little bit suspect. Although luckily there isn't any rust in here. It's, it's only panel rust, so that's easily repairable. I need to start bending it all back and see, start squaring up the, uh, the donor bumper to uh, attach. But yeah, that actually came off a lot easier than I had expected. And while we're in here, do the alternator and uh, voltage regulator and everything because we've got direct access to it all. So I'll start ripping some of this apart and I'll pop the camera back on if there's anything interesting. I'm back and if you notice a change in the lighting, that's because it's nearly four hours later and it's taken me four hours just to get that off the engine. Now I doubt it takes this long normally. Uh, the real reason that it took me four hours to get all the tin work off the front of the engine is because it was so bent and so mangled that uh, I resorted to a lot of this and uh, a lot of prying to get it off. You can see it's not happy. Um, I'm going to try to straighten it out as best I can. You can actually see where it was rubbing on the flywheel in there. And uh, when the back of the engine was hit from the impact, it actually pushed a piece of tin work right through the aluminum casing of the motor. Let me see if I can get a shot of that. See that right there. Um, now I'm attempting to get the alternator out, which is proving rather difficult. Um, loosened it up, obviously, with the tensioner bolt up here. And uh, make sure you can actually see something. Okay. So loosened it up here with this tensioner bolt. And uh, the alternator now, of course, moves around. And I detension and remove the belt and the oil filler and all that stuff. And uh, I think I'm going to have to get underneath here somehow with a wrench, because I can tell there's a bolt right here. This is the head of which. And that holds the alternator in place. Now, I really hope I don't have to take off any of the exhaust system, because that looks really, like, rusted on. And I don't really want to take it off because I'm afraid I'll break it and then I won't be able to get it back together again. Um, so hopefully I can do that without, like, yeah, maybe. We'll see, I guess. Oh, wait, does this unbolt from here? This looks like it unbolts from here. I might be able to do that. All right, stay tuned. Another inexplicably long amount of time has passed. And there is now a hole where the alternator should have been. That's because I took the alternator out, finally, which took way too long. I did it kind of the cheap way, and I just disconnected it right here from the alternator, instead of uh, disconnecting it deep inside the engine compartment. Um, the alternator I bought did come with a loom on it. Just move my tools and things over. I can't see any visible failure, but I'm assuming it's somewhere inside there in the voltage regulator part. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there's the wires, little plug here for the voltage regulator, and then the actual positive cable to charge the battery. By the way, yes, I'm not an idiot, I did disconnect the battery this time. I had previously bought a new voltage regulator to try to fix the problem, but it didn't fix the problem. So I have a spare voltage regulator. I'm assuming the voltage regulator that's actually in the bus, buried way back there, 
can see it is fine because the new one didn't solve the problem. So we'll go ahead and we'll put the alternator in. I figure it's actually quite interesting how this thing cools itself because there's no fan on the alternator. Air blows from the cooling fan system through this tube here and then through the alternator and then the tin work around here causes the cold air, the hot air that's coming out to actually get sucked into the engine. So there's this constant flow of, of air going through the alternator to keep it cool, which is kind of interesting. Um, the bane of my existence was getting this bolt out, um, this one right here, because you can only really get to it with an open end wrench from underneath here, like through this little slot, and you can only turn it like, oh, like a quarter of a turn each time. And uh, it took me like an hour to get this bolt out. So we'll go ahead and we'll wire up the new alternator and we'll get it installed. And hopefully it won't take as long putting it back together. I'm joking, of course. I'm sure it will, if not longer. Anyway, stay. Okay. More time and more damage done to my hands later. And the new cough, cough, actually cheap Samba Classifieds alternator is installed. And I just have to put all the tin work back on, or as much of it as needed to hold the alternator in, and uh, we'll put the rest of it back on after we replace this beam. So, that is something I don't want to have to do again. Replacing the alternator on this Type 4 engine is a real pain. Seriously, it, it is such a pain. Alright, we've got a new alternator in and everything's connected. Let's see if it charges. Moment of truth. Here we go. Hmm. I think I have the alternator belt on too tight. All right, tightened up the all or loosened up the alternator belt. So here we go. Hmm. Hey, there we go. And we're making electricity. Awesome. The bus is now essentially all systems go. The only thing that was broken was when I shorted out the alternator. However, I'm still going to do fuel lines, obviously, so it doesn't burn down, plugs and wires and other stuff. But uh, it's certainly nice to start it up and see that generator light turn off. I think I'm going to call it here. Really successful day. I'm really tired, and I'm going to go get some dinner. Uh, so thanks a lot for watching, uh, commenting, subscribing, etc. Uh, until next time, everyone, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.